guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany, if you're new here. I am a first year PA student and I just finished my first semester. So I wanted to give you guys some tips on what I've learned just from the three to four months that I've been in school. And this video has been highly requested, so I wanted to make sure that I got this out before I started my second semester. I hope you guys enjoy this video and find everything that I tell you to be at least a little bit helpful. Without further ado, let's get into how I studied for my first semester. So the courses that I took my first semester were physiology, anatomy, physical exam and diagnostic modalities one and medicine one as well as pharmacology one. It was a total of 17 credits and that is the most credits I've ever taken in a semester before so previously in undergrad it was always either 14 or 15 credits but i've never gone up to 17 and then next semester i'm taking 18. in comparison it definitely is a lot more work the one thing i learned from my first semester is that every class is going to have its own way of studying for my first semester I've realized that the way that I need to study in PA school is a lot different than what I was used to in undergrad. So I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on what I did for my undergrad years just so that I can compare between the two. In my undergrad years, I only made study guides and read the material over maybe once or twice. I would make the study guides, go through all of the PowerPoints and make sure that I highlighted the most important things. I wrote everything out so that it would be in my head and like doing that one time was enough for me in undergrad, but I realized very quickly in PA school that one, handwriting is not going to cut anymore just because there is so much more material. You're taking at least two to three exams every week. So imagine having to condense 200, 300, 400 slides of material into a 20 page study guide, but then at the same time be handwriting all of that. There is literally no way that you could do that unless you were ambidextrous and you could write two pages with both hands at a time. So most of my study guides now are typed up and i will show you them so I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of what they look like i think i want to start with medicine just because the study guide for that looks a lot different than what my study guides for pdm physiology and pharmacology look like like i said the one big thing that changed was that i had to start typing up all of my notes and also typing up my study guides so after i've typed up my study guides i would print them out and then I would take my 700 highlighters and pens and whatever else I needed and I would highlight the things that needed to be remembered. In medicine class, you are given the disease, the signs and symptoms that come along with it, so what the patient is telling you that they feel and then also what you as a practitioner should be looking out for and then you also get how to diagnose it so what type of test would you need to run or what types of labs would you need to look at in order to diagnose that certain disease and then also what your treatment plan would be you're given about i don't know like 50 to 75 diseases per exam so what i did is i put all of the diseases into a chart which is why my study guide is basically 40 pages here is an example of what my study guide for derm looked like i would have a column with the disease and because this is derm a lot of it was visual and so i put a picture of what that particular skin disease looked like the etiology so what caused it then i had the signs and symptoms how to diagnose it with the test and the treatments and on the last column i would have like extraneous information if i needed to know that and then what i would do is go through the entire packet and all my lectures highlight everything that was important write extra notes on the side and then i would go into anki which is a flashcard database that you can download onto your computer a lot of med school students use this as well as i think pre-med students to study from mcats that's how i heard about it because my friend used it to study for her mcats exam 
So I decided to give it a try and there's a specific type of flashcard that I use on the database and it's called closed flashcards. So basically how it works is you type out your questions or whatever you are quizzing yourself on and then you can put these little like brackets around certain words that you want to be blanked out and in one card you could have multiple places that are blanked out but they blank out at different times if that makes any sense then at the end when you're going through your cards what happens is it'll show you this disease is blank and then it'll give you all the signs and symptoms the treatment what the etiology is and you basically have to fill in the blank to say what the disease is and then at the end you can rate if it was easy difficult hard there's like another choice but i can't really remember and then the program will know when to bring that card back up based on how you rated it. I personally learned that this was the best way for me to learn because I'm a kinesthetic learner, so I like to do things with my hands. And rather than making physical flashcards, because that takes a lot of time, just doing this little thing where I'm pressing a button saying, this card was easy for me or this was hard, it's allowing my brain to kind of remember the card as well as the information both at the same time. And and that really worked for me and I realized that from my first exam so I continued that throughout the entire semester and then also I realized that when I am studying for my pants exam I can still do these cards because they're in my computer I like to think of it as an investment because I'm spending a lot of time making these cards but it's helping me for these exams and I'm also able to use them in the future when I'm studying for my pants exam that is basically what I do for medicine and then moving on to pharmacology this is like a totally new class for me i've never taken anything like this in undergrad what i did for pharmacology is i made tables with the medication names how its mechanism of action is the side effects and any special information that i needed to know about certain medications and by that i mean there are some people who are allergic to penicillin and then can't take that but penicillins is a huge huge class of antibiotics and so if you cannot take penicillin that really knocks out a whole class of drugs that you can't use to treat a lot of different diseases and so there are specific drugs that you would need to use in place that's what i mean by if i have special information about a certain drug that i'll put that in the last column here i have all of my antibiotic stuff and putting things into charts really helps me so that's why i have it in this format and then there are also times when i just have a huge table with words because i can't really group everything into those neat little tables and then it gets even crazier it looks like it's a lot and it is but it's definitely doable so don't be scared if you're going to pa school or med school at the end after i've studied all of this sometimes i will go through an Anki, but most of the time I leave that more for medicine. So what I like to do is use my friends as Anki. That's how I like to describe it. But basically I do a group study session with two or three friends. Usually it's one or two because when there's more than two people, it gets very loud and there's just a lot of energy going around. Sometimes when you're doing questions, it can be difficult because one person will know the answer a lot faster than the other. And then there's just clashing. So I honestly think that if you can find someone, it doesn't even have to be two people, it could just be one person that you can work with to study and bounce ideas off of each other. It definitely helps. That's what I've done this semester. I have one friend that we literally will sit ourselves down and just make up questions and be like, if patient presents with this and they cannot take this medication, what would you take? Or if patient presents with this disease and they've tried this and this, what would your next line of therapy be? And also, sometimes you could focus on things that you think will be on the exam, but then your friend will focus on something totally different and you didn't even know that that was something that might be important. For my next class, which is physiology, this is the one class that a lot of my classmates, including me, we all struggle with this because there is so much information and 
the study guides look no different. So sometimes you will see paragraphs, sometimes you will see charts, pictures, and everything. One thing that has really helped me is watching YouTube videos. What I like to do is if I'm learning a specific system, whether that be the enteric system, the cardiac system, respiratory system, I will look up YouTube videos and I particularly recommend watching Ninja Nerd, I think he does a phenomenal job at explaining a lot of systems and he's also a PA himself so you should definitely go give him some support. My entire class loves his videos. Our, like It's our ritual to watch his videos before we do our physiology exams and he will walk you through the entire process, draw out everything and I'm a very visual person as well when I'm learning so seeing the things that I'm learning being drawn out has helped me remember better just because I can visualize what I'm being taught. And then after I self-study all of this, I will do the same thing where I do my group studying with one or two friends. We'll go through the questions and basically quiz each other. And that's what I do for physiology. The last two classes that I want to talk about, one is physical exam and diagnostic modalities. This is the class where you learn how to do physical exams. Basically talk to a patient, ask them questions, and do a physical exam on them to see what is wrong. And I really like this class because it's the core of your job. It's what you have to be good at in order to figure out what is wrong with your patient. If you can't do a physical exam properly, there's no way you can even find the signs or know the symptoms that they're having in order to diagnose them with their particular disease. There's so much that I've learned in this class. How to use a stethoscope properly, how to use an ophthalmoscope properly, how to hold it, how to make sure that the light is properly on, how to position yourself in terms of the patient's space to make them feel more comfortable. It's just like so much that I've never known, but then thinking back on it, it definitely makes a difference because your patient will remember how they felt when they were in that examination room with you. And I really like the fact that my school gives us time to practice, but then also have clinical physical exams where we have to act out these things with a patient. And I think that that really mimics the environment that we would be in if we were in a hospital, which I'm so grateful for because it definitely does take off some of that pressure when you actually are talking to a real patient in a hospital setting. So how I study for this class is I will go through the material that I need to know for that physical exam, all the steps that need to be done, and if there's a particular order that they have to be in. So an example would be when you're doing your abdominal exam, you need to do auscultation before you do palpation because if you're pushing on the patient's abdomen before you auscultate, you can alter the bowel sounds, which is what you don't want to do. I will have everything that needs to be done on a study guide so that if I'm just reading it over, I have it with me. And then in terms of acting it out, grab a friend, grab a sister, parent, boyfriend, like whoever is available and just practice it on them. When you're in the shower, recite the words that you need to be saying. So for this class, it was more hands-on and speaking in terms of studying. It wasn't so much like sitting down doing flashcards if that makes any sense. So every single class I'm telling you has a different method to studying and you need to figure out what works best for you based on how you like to learn. And then lastly, I have anatomy, which is pure rote memorization. And for that, I used Quizlet because a lot of my classmates would make the Quizlets and then I would just use their Quizlet to quiz myself. Before that, I would obviously go through the material and self-study. So if they didn't make a Quizlet, then I would make my own. But most of the time they do that. And I'm so grateful that my classmates are so nice enough to share that because honestly, being in pay school, you guys are a huge, huge family. Everyone in your class is going through their own struggles, but you guys are all going through the one same thing, which is studying for your 700 different classes. And you guys are all taking the same exam. 
with all the exact same information so it doesn't hurt to help each other like my program says it's no longer a competition because we've made it we've made it into the graduate part we've made it into pa school and there's really no reason to be fighting each other to get your way to the top because after you graduate this you're going to get an interview for a job and then you're going to start working the best thing that you and your classmates can do for each other is to help each other out whether that's studying in groups giving each other study guides making each other quizlets sharing that together and that is the best way to study it's to lean on your classmates and use whatever resources are given to you. I also did want to show you guys um, what I do for anatomy because it's very, very visual. I will draw out certain things or like write out certain things onto my Good Notes app. So here I just have which trunks certain nerves are coming out of, and then I'll have the same thing for other things. This is the thoracic view, and I'll have other things where I'll just write out a bunch of stuff and highlight and know like the branches of the arteries. A lot of it is very visual and so that's why I used this method to study for anatomy rather than printing out words that I've learned that seeing the body parts has helped a lot and then also you have structure lab which is when you see a cadaver and dissect it to see the anatomy in the flesh. That is also something but that doesn't help you study as much just because your time is limited there. So I would definitely use visuals and pictures to study for anatomy. That's something that really, really helped me. I will say I didn't learn that until maybe the second exam. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's probably very long and I hope it's somewhat helpful and that I answered all of your questions. I know a lot of you left comments on the previous two videos asking for something like this. So I really, really hope that I answer all of your questions. If I didn't, definitely leave them down below or you can always DM me. I always get random DMs from people saying like I've seen you I'm planning to go to PA school and I have some questions I just want to ask like definitely reach out I will answer them whenever I get the time I am very busy sometimes so if I don't answer you that day I will definitely get to you whenever I have free time but feel free to reach out I'm definitely available and yeah if you have any further questions I'm telling you leave them down below I'm happy to answer whatever you guys want to ask and hopefully I'll have an answer for you I'm gonna try to get this video out before the new year so I just want to say happy new year to you guys thank you for tuning in and watching this video and if you're applying to PA school if you're in PA school if you want to go to PA school I wish you the best of luck you can do it. I know you can. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.